you. He loves you more than anything. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to a very familiar passage of Scripture and yet to a very powerful passage of Scripture. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. Thank you for coming to worship Him and magnify Him and exalt Him. My, we serve a wonderful God. Now, I am going to ask you to stand. I know some of you have already have been seated, but I am going to ask you to stand because I believe whether I'm sick in body, whether I have heart condition, leg condition, whatever kind of condition that I want to say I have, when the Word of God is read, I believe everybody ought to stand for the Word because it just gives respect unto the Word. So we're going to turn in our Bibles, but before you do, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, hey, your week has just been made. Now, now hold on. Tell them one more time. Your week has just been made. Because you've been waiting to sit by me all last week. Hey, what's wrong with you three ladies right here? You guys can't talk? Hey, look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, today is a good day because you're sitting by me. That's right. That's right. John chapter 3 and verse 1. No doubt many of you can quote it, but a very powerful passage. There was a man of the, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Look at verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night. I wonder why he came by night. Do you think because he didn't want to be seen? He was afraid. You, you do understand that Nicodemus was a ruler, right? He was a righteous man. He was an elder in the temple, okay? He, he was uh, someone that people looked up to and they idolized him. But now look, look at verse 2 with me. The scripture says, and the same came to Jesus by night because he didn't want to be seen. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, I love what Jesus said. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Everybody, how many's got your Bibles? Would, would you just, well, whether it's a Bible, an iPhone, I, I understand. I'm living in 20, what, 19? Is that what day I'm living in today? So we got iPads, we got iPhones, whatever it is. Just, just raise whatever electronic or, or, or your word. Now, this isn't Pastor Jim saying this, and this isn't the Life Church saying this. This is God's word. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How? How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Look at what Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water, everybody say water, and of the Spirit, say spirit, spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Anybody don't agree with that? Probably ain't going to raise your hand right here, are you? Verse 6. Look at what verse 6 says. That which is born of flesh is flesh. And that which is born of spirit, is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. My title for this morning is simply going to be, There's More Behind the Door. There's more behind the door. You may be seated. 
Nicodemus was saying, I see the kingdom of God at work in you. Did, did you get that? I know you were seated, but I want you to focus in real quick, okay? Look at this. Nicodemus was saying, I see, I see the kingdom of God at work in you. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. He recognized that Jesus had something very special about him. Uh, he recognized that Jesus uh, had been tapped into uh, the dimension uh, of a spiritual power uh, that he had never, ever seen. You do have to understand that Nicodemus was a man of the law. He was a man of the religious day. Uh, he was a religious uh, individual are you getting the picture uh, he knew what the word uh, says uh, and he says here uh, hey uh, I understand uh, that you have power uh, that I have never experienced uh, and he says I want it uh, he says how can I get in uh, Jesus simply responds uh, by telling Nicodemus uh, how to enter uh, into uh, the kingdom. Uh, he says you simply uh, must be born uh, again. Uh, Jesus starts uh, in verse 5. Uh, that which is born of the water uh, and the spirit. Uh, and no one can enter the kingdom of God unless you are born of the water and of the spirit. Now, from Adam to John the Baptist, the Holy Ghost did not dwell inside of them. It doesn't mean that the Holy Spirit was not present and active during the Old Testament. For scripture will tell us in the book of Judges that the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson and he performed a mighty feat of strength. It came upon Elijah and Elisha and enabled them to do the great signs and miracles. It came upon King Saul who prophesied, right, with the prophets. But it came upon them at brief seasons and then departed. In the Old Testament, People did not have God's spirit continually abiding in their lives. Now, hang on. Now, this is going to be hard, but believe this. Here it is. We are greater than those Old Testament men and women. I'm going to say this very slowly because I want you to get it. I understand I'm on the clock. We are greater than those Old Testament men and women who went before us. Not because, listen to pastor, not because of who we are or of any merit on our own, but because of the indwelling. I wish somebody would say the indwelling. Because of the indwelling spirit, which they did not have. To the extent we have God's spirit living in us. So we are greater than Abraham. Come on now. We are greater than Moses. We are greater than Samson and Solomon and David and Samuel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel and all of the prophets. They only talked about the kingdom. You're not hearing me. We're living in the kingdom. I said all they could do is talk about it, but you and I are living in it. 1 Peter 1 and 2, 12 tells us, Who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Ghost, set down from heaven, 
which things the angels desire to look into. Angels desired to look into the Holy Ghost. Why? Well, we've got to go back to our text in John. Why did Nicodemus want into the kingdom? Now listen, this was a religious man. Have I said that already once? I get in trouble for repeating myself. Have I said that Nicodemus was a religious man? Nicodemus knew the word. He was a learned man of the word of God. But listen, Nicodemus wanted to be in the kingdom. He didn't want to be on the outside of the kingdom. Uh, can I tell you today, uh, we're living in the day uh, and we're living in the hour uh, where there is going to be an increase uh, of people uh, that are tired uh, of living on the outside uh, and they're going to say, I uh, want to be a part uh, of the kingdom uh, of God. <laughs> Jesus' lifestyle was so compelling. He watched Jesus. He behold Jesus. He watched his actions. He watched his mannerisms. He watched how he went about his day. He watched how he handled things and how he gave orders and how he taught. And there was something in the side of Nicodemus that says, wait a minute. I don't just want to talk about this kingdom. I want to be about the kingdom. Luke 4 and 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. I don't know why we think we're more anointed if we scream, but we preachers do. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Look at this. To preach deliverance to the captive and recovering of the sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. Why would little children run up to Jesus? Why would the rich and the poor follow him? Why would more than 5,000 people hang out with Jesus for three days, endure hunger? Now, this is just my personal beliefs, but I believe they fasted three days because they were so engulfed in the words of Jesus. Because Jesus finally said uh, on the third day, right? Hey, we need to go get some meat. We need to go get these people something to eat. Jesus understood that they had been there a while. I don't have Bible. It don't spell it out there. But in my own thinking, I think they probably fasted for three days because they were so engrossed in hearing what he had to say. Why would men and women and children leave their farms, their fishing boats, their homes, and their village just to sit at his feet. It was because they loved what he had to say. It was because he told them about a citizenship in a kingdom that would give them a higher lifestyle and a greater future than they would find in the kingdom of man. Jesus preached a very simple message. The kingdom of heaven has come to earth. The driving motivation of Jesus' life uh, was not uh, to get us to heaven. If that was the case, when we were born again, why didn't he just take us to heaven? Here's the go. You need to write this down. You need to memorize this. And you need to live by this. Here is the go. He wants to get heaven in us. Some of you, it went right over your head. I said he wants to get heaven in us. 
It doesn't make sense to you that Jesus would come and save us and then he wants us to wait 70 or 80 years until we die and then go to heaven. I've come to tell you, God has a purpose on earth just for you. And can I tell you something uh, that only you can do uh, what God's purpose is uh, for you to do? You're not an accident. You're not an oops. You're not a mistake. You're not just a has-been. You're not just a wash-up. I've come to tell you that God has got a plan and a purpose for your life. The reason why you are breathing today is because God allowed you to wake up this morning. Uh, come on, saint of God. Uh, come on, guests of ours. Uh, the reason why I'm here uh, today, uh, it's not because uh, I'm good uh, or I'm careful uh, or I'm healthy. Uh, the reason uh, I'm here today uh, is because God uh, has got a plan uh, for my life. Uh, God has got a purpose uh, that only James uh, Mitchell uh, Manning uh, can do. Uh, I wish somebody uh, would start believing even uh, that you got a purpose. Uh, God's got a plan. Uh, God's got a reason for you. But, but pastor, uh, I'm an ex-druggie. I'm an ex alky uh, I just smoked a weed last night. Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, you can't have a testimony uh, until you had a test. Uh, and God uh, has got a plan uh, for your life. Uh, Come on, uh, we've let the devil rob us uh, and cheat us uh, and steal from us. Uh, and God says, I got a purpose for you. I got a purpose, I got a plan. Uh, he said, I want somebody to preach the good news. You know what, you may just be that preacher. My buddy received the Holy Ghost uh, at you, Congress. <laughs> All them other sorry people bought Cubs stuff when we went to the game. But my buddy, uh, he bought a Cardinal stuff uh, and sat right by me. Who won? Oh, the Cardinals, that's right. Don't need to say no more. Listen to me. You're that preacher. To heal the broken heart. To give sight to the blind. He said, your job is to set the captive free, to loose those who were in addiction, in a bondage, in slavery, to preach God's favor as a parent. Why would you want your child to struggle every day of their life for 80 years and have them sing and rejoice about a place that is better off than the here and now and just work? while it is a better day to come. Why walk? Why? Why? Why would we want to talk about heaven? Because it helps get our minds off of our problems here on earth. We get so sing busy singing about I'll fly away. Emory probably don't even know that song. Or when we all get to heaven. And it's so easy to forget for a little while that we got car trouble. That the bills are overdue. That we're late on our rent. That we just lost our job. That we have health issues and families trouble. That's very understandable. But the consequences of this kind of preaching is that all we can say is just hang on. Things are tough, but the Lord is coming back. And when he does, he's going to get us out of all of this mess. The comfort of heaven helps you and I keep us on the straight and the narrow. It keeps us going through the dark hours. And it gives us this wonderful and needful sense that we are going to make it. But hear me, but it's not 
and should never be the focus of the gospel we preach. Scripture does not promise us that Jesus would rescue us from a world that is on the break of overcoming us. Jesus said in John 16, 33, These things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. You see, we're trying to get it in a job, and you'll never find peace in a job. You're trying to get it in a mate, and you're never going to find peace in a mate. You're trying to get peace in a dollar bill, and peace is never going to come in a dollar bill. You will only find peace in Jesus Christ. He said, in this world, you are going to have tribulation." He said, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You have to understand something this morning. Jesus quoted this passage of scripture before he went to Gethsemane, before he was crucified. Jesus knew that there was trouble coming, but he said, I have overcome the world. We tell people to put their faith in Jesus for salvation, and then we focus on heaven as our go and our destination and Jesus didn't preach a lot about heaven look at it the disciples didn't talk a lot about heaven there may be a lot of applies to the idea of going to heaven in the sweet by and by but people struggle with the daily life on earth. They need a message that will help them in the sour here and now. We need to be taught how to live in the world, not how to escape the world. Our problem is uh, we're trying to figure out how we can get out of this world. uh, And he's saying, I put you here uh, for a reason. I got a plan for you. I've got a purpose for you. And we're trying to escape this world. What this means is that when we live and we think and we act like kingdom citizens, we can't overcome. We can be victorious and fruitful, not in the sweet by and by, but I'm talking about today. I'm talking about right now. I don't know how many needs to be an overcomer, but I'm here to tell you, if you'll change your citizenship from this earth to his kingdom, you will live how to be victorious. It means that we can overcome right now. Now, Jesus was speaking as an overcomer before he even went to the cross. We don't have to be victims of our circumstances. We can avail ourselves of our kingdomship and all of its blessings, its rights, and its benefits to help us rise above our circumstance in every situation that you and I face. If all Jesus wanted to do was just save us, then why didn't he just come down, go to the cross, save us and go back to heaven but for three and a half years he showed us how to walk here on earth you see you've got a mission while you're here on this earth and the mission is not just occupying until he comes Your mission is to go find somebody that's brokenhearted. Your mission is to go find somebody that's blind. Your mission is to go find somebody that's hungry. He, my friend, went and healed the sick. He fed the multitude. He calmed the storms. And he overcame fear, doubt, and worry. 
He was tempted over all adversaries. Yet Jesus teaches us, you got to get this, that nothing outside of us is bigger than what's inside us. You didn't get that. Jesus teaches us that there's nothing on the outside that is bigger than what's on the inside. That's why 1 John 4 and 4, John wrote these words. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in this world. You and God are a majority. Oh, I wish somebody would believe that. You and God are a majority. You and God are unbeatable formula for victory. You see, if you are being overcome, now listen, if you're being overcome by this world, then we are not expecting what the Lord wants us to have. Something in our life is missing. Jesus wants us to experience heaven on earth. Have you ever eaten at a really, really good restaurant? What's the first thing you want to do? You want to tell a friend because you want them to experience what you have experienced. Jesus wants you to experience what he experienced. He modeled heaven on earth for three and a half years and then he gave us the power and the Holy Ghost so that we could experience it too. Scripture tells us in John 10 and 9, I didn't give that to him, but in John 10 and 9 it says, I am the door. Jesus, my friend, is the door. But the door to what? Jesus is the door to enter the kingdom of God. Salvation is not a diploma. It's a birth certificate. Being born again is not flesh led it starts way back being born again is the first step through the door let's tell the world about Jesus and the door that has been opened to us and let's also tell them about the life on the other side you see a door is a potential that leads to more. Jesus is the door. But there is more behind the door. There's hope. There's peace. There's joy. And there's power to rise above our daily problems and difficulties in life right now. The kingdom of God is good news. It's not just to get saved and then to wait on heaven. No. I'm going to say that again. Listen, we've got this so wrong. We feel like all we've got to do is get saved and then we just put our little fannies on a church pew, write our name on a row and say, okay, I'm ready for when the rapture comes. That's never what he had in mind. He wants you and I to understand that you have a purpose and there is a plan for your life. But the only way that plan is going to be fulfilled in your life is you've got to step through the door to get the more. You see, People say they want Jesus, but they want Jesus on their conditions. 
They want religion, but it's got to be on their condition. But see, Jesus said, hey, I am the door. I am the good shepherd. You see, it was never the job of the shepherd to make the sheep eat. The job of the shepherd was to lead them to green pastures. If they didn't nourish themselves, it was on them. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of people that come to church and goes through the mechanics of a church, but they're never a part of the kingdom. They're a part of man's kingdom, but they're not a part of God's kingdom. Because to be a part of God's kingdom, you've got to walk through the door to get the more. You see, and when you walk through the door and get the more, you get more peace. You get more joy. You get more happiness. You get fulfillment. You get contentment. But you've got to walk through the door. All the things that you and I are looking for, all the things that we're searching for, all of the things that we truly want, they're right there. But Pastor Tommy, if I ask you to walk through that door, you got to put a little effort into it, don't you? What do you have to do? Would you do it for me? You got to get up and you got to walk over. He's got to push the door to get the more. You see, here's the problem with Christianity today. We're satisfied with just being in his presence. But he's saying there's more beyond the door. He's saying, I have a life that is abundant life. Life of abundant living. He's saying that if you come my way, I'll make a way. Where's the singers? Come on. Where there seemeth to be no way. I know. I know from my personal experience. I was in... My Lord, I got the whole choir up here. Wow, I'm, I must really needed some help today. <laughs> I didn't get two or three. I got the whole team. <laughs> but I know what I'm talking about. Because I went through a hard spell. And I went through a difficult moment. And I could have been satisfied with just being in his presence. But I needed more. I needed that everlasting arm. I needed, Brother Monty, that hand of comfort. I needed that outstretched arm. I needed that peace that passes all understanding because where I was in the season of my life, I didn't know which way was up. I didn't know which direction to go, but I understood if I could walk through the door, there's more and it'll make a way where there seemed to be. No way. Nicodemus came to Jesus and the Bible says he came at night. Why did he come at night? Because he was afraid of what people were going to say. You know why some of you are not going to come today? Yep, you're a pretty good guesser. You're afraid of what somebody's going to say. My God, I thought they had the Holy Ghost. Right? Right? What's in their life? Nicodemus came by night because he didn't want anyone to see him. But he seen something in Jesus that says, wait a moment. The kingdom that I'm about doesn't give me the more. But the kingdom he is of in gives the more. He gives life and life more abundantly. I've seen him raise the dead. I've seen him heal the sick. I've seen him heal the palsy. I've seen him straighten out limbs. I have watched him as he fed 5,000 with two small loaves and, five, and a couple of fish. I watched him. Surely there's 
something about him. Nicodemus understood that I've got to step through the door to get the more in my life. Now, I'm going to ask you to stand, but this isn't dismissal time. Some of you think this is checkout time. Same time for you to leave. I don't care who you are. There are some of you that desperately need the more. You need some peace. You need some joy. You need some relief from the crashing load that is upon you. You need God to intervene like now, right now, like, just like the men of God needed him. But all you've got to do is do, is simply do what the word says. And that is to simply Walk out. Take that step. If Nicodemus would have never came to Jesus, Nicodemus would have never understood how to get into the kingdom. Nicodemus was thinking, how can I be born when I am old? How can I enter my mother's womb the second time? That's an impossible task. I can't, Ethan can't enter your womb again. He's already, thank God, huh? Piper can't go back in. Thank God. Did it once. But that's not what he was saying. He said, you see, Nicodemus, you've got to be born of the water. You've got to be born of the Spirit. I don't know your relationship with God. I don't know where you stand with God. I'm not your judge. I'm not your Lord. But I am here to tell you there's more. Because Nicodemus found the more. Nicodemus had to slide out at night because he didn't want nobody to see him. But Nicodemus revealed that, that hey, there's more to this than what I have. And Nicodemus understood, I can live victorious now. I can be an overcomer now. I can enjoy life here on earth. You know what's sad? Is I think there's too many Christians that don't enjoy living. Because we've gotten this all messed up in our heads. We said we got this that I've got the Holy Ghost. I spoke in a heavenly language. I was buried in the lovely name of Jesus. I'm gonna cop a squat until he comes. No, no, no. That's not what it's about. He saved you for a reason. He has a plan for your life. But pastor, you don't understand where I've been. Guess what? He still has a plan. He looked at Zacchaeus and said, hey, come on down. Today I'm going to your house. Look throughout scriptures. He ate with the sinners. He didn't eat with the religious people. He didn't have time for them. He wanted to get people into his kingdom. Can I tell you today, there's not a sin that you've done that God won't forgive you. There's not a wrong that has happened in your life that God won't extend his grace and mercy to you. Do you understand this morning that God loves you? And God loves you unconditionally. And as they right now turn down the house lights for me, I'm just going to ask you, you know that person that you told them they were going to have a good week because they were sitting by you? You know that one? Would you reach over and grab them by the hand? And would you just say, would you walk down to that altar with me because I really don't want to go by myself. Come on.
through which we pass from death to life, from darkness to light, from guilt to pardon, from shame into joy, from defeat to victory. Remember that Jesus said, I am the door. Not pastor, not the life church. Jesus said, I am the door. Would you reach over and grab that neighbor by the hand or lay your hand on their shoulder? Would you pray for him right now?